Hello everyone, here is Arkady. Welcome to my technology channel. Today I have something very, very special for you. We're going to talk about thermospraying. And thermospraying is one of the most famous and oldest technologies for surface treatment to build coatings, to protect your components and to prolong lifetime of them. I have also a very special guest today, one of the most famous and known experts in thermospray who is giving already for over 30 years trainings for all customers by a company of Ericon. I'm pleased and happy to introduce you, Peter. Hi, Akadi. I'm very happy to welcome you on my channel yeah. and I'm really excited to hear what can you tell us today. I'm a dinosaur here in the world of thermal spray technology. Uh, Akadi already told you I'm since more than uh, 33 years in the surface technology business and I love to make customers happy and thermal spraying is the technology for that. Okay, Peter, very interesting. Maybe at the beginning, we see here a lot of components which are called guns, some parts, but what is thermal spray? Can you tell us a little what is about the technology? Yeah, thermal spraying is a surface technology. Does, that means that uh, if the customer has, uh, let's say a surface issue, mainly it's a uh, mechanical, or thermal or chemical issue, thermal spraying can help him to, self to solve this problem and to increase the lifetime of his components. And how does thermal spray work? It's a process where we melt in different pro with different processes, we melt material, either wire or powders and accelerate then the molten powder onto the surface of customer's component, which then will increase the lifetime of the components and brings the, in this way brings a value for the customer. So basically we build coatings on the surface. Right, absolutely right. How does it look like? Uh, so you see here some examples of different kind of coatings. It depends uh, what the surface issue the customer has and uh, Based on his request, uh, we will find out the right technology. We have basically four technologies. One is a thermal spray technology. We call it combustion wire flame technology, which was uh, developed by Max Schaub. Here you see the component for that. Uh, in 1909, he got a patent for this kind of technology. So which it's over 100 years. That's right, that's right. Oh, and this is one of the first guns for so combustion thermal spraying. Exactly, we call it combustion flame spray Y technology. Peter, uh, as we discussed, this technology is over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. So first uh, coatings were produced back to 20, beginning of 20th century. So what is behind this uh, combustion process? So basically this process will be used for corrosion protection. It can also be used for wear, but mainly for corrosion. That means we have, a, uh, we have a wire which comes here from the back and will be fed to the front of the gun. Here, we ignite the gun with a fuel gas, mainly is acetylene and oxygen. Then we have a flame and the flame will then melt the tip. And then we have atomized air, which is then accelerating the molten material onto the workpiece and gives them their coating on the part. So you basically build like pancakes which get uh, connected to each other on the surface. Exactly, exactly. Very interesting. So we have a lamellar structure, we call it lamellar structure. Lamellar structure, good. So what is the typical thickness of those type of coatings? Yeah, basically we do three, four, five hundred microns. We can go up to one, mi uh, one, millimeter, one millimeter, but normally it's three hundred to two, three hundred microns. Okay. So let's say this is one of the first processes which were used for thermal spraying. That's right. What that's was the next development? So afterwards we noted that uh, we are limited with the material, with the selection of air. So we noted that the next perhaps we are more flexible when we go with powder. So we came up, that also Max Schwab came up about 11 years later with the flame spray technology. This is a flame powder spray technology that means it's a similar process, nearly the same. We have also an acetylene oxygen flame in front, 
but we do no more feed the wire from the back we feed in than here powder where we are uh, with uh, this pad we are most fle more flexible and this was then the second development this combustion powder flame technology so basically a development of this uh, wire feeded process to powder took a couple of decades yeah, yeah about one decade one i think decade. in 1999 he developed this yeah. gun and uh, this gun this uh, technology and about 10 years later the same person max yeah was max Schoen. Max Schoen developed a new technology where he replaced wires with powders which gave people more flexibility in terms exactly. of material selection exactly exactly okay very and interesting. applications are the same mainly used for uh, uh, corrosion protection but today we are using for special application for example we can use this gun also all already today uh, in the aircraft industry for uh, let's say for spray for control the gap between the outer and the rotor because when we can minimize this gap we can increase the efficiency of the turbine and this technology will today use the uh, with this technology uh, will be used in order to spray we call it abradables in the housing of this uh, of these uh, engines which can increase i already said the efficiency of the turbine or the flying engine so you want to say that the technology which was developed more than 100 years ago is still in use in aircraft engines right wow right. cool imagine 100 years ago developed gun with the powders which still can be found in applications in aircraft and protect the coatings on airplanes where most of us typically fly. Peter, as yeah. we sit now by Erlikon in the herd of Switzerland, mm -hmm. and just uh, I realized that actually Mark Schopp, who was a father of the whole thermospray technology, he's coming from Switzerland. Is it correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. He's living in, he lived in Zurich and he also studied in the university in Zurich. Very interesting. And the Max shop has also helped this technology to become famous on the market. Exactly. And I believe we move now to a next gun. I feel like a Star Wars variant with this one. <laughs> yeah, this is an electric arc gun. At the same time, also in, uh, around uh, 1910, exactly 1916, he developed the arc spray technology process. Arc spraying is uh, not a combustion spray process he went away from the combustion process so he developed here an arc spray process that means here we are using uh, two arcs two sorry two wires which comes in here to the front and we have a rectifier on one hand on the other side and the rectifier will, will transfer the ac into dc so we have the anode and the cathode and we bring the two wires we bring together and create an arc between and then we develop a very high temperature, exactly more than 50,000 degrees the electric arc has, and the tips of the wires will then melt away and will be blown by atomized, will be blown by atomized air onto the workpiece. And on that way, we also create then a coating, which is also mainly used for corrosion protection, also for uh, refurbish some, uh, some parts in the, in the turbine industry, like technical wires, for example, stainless steel wires, we can use with this technology uh, to protect the part against corrosion. Uh, the big, big advantage of this technology is we have tremendous high feed rate. We can hear kilo, many kilos per hour we can feed. So compared to the other process, it's a process which can feed or let's say can, can melt the most material in a short time. I'm curious, like, you know, one of the high melting temperature materials commonly used in, let's say, coating processes is molybden. Yep. What about molybden? Can any of those first developed technologies be used for working with molybden components? Yeah, for sure. The, the combustion flame process, the wire process, combustion wire flame process, that's a huge application. In the past, we sprayed a lot of synchrone rings in the automotive industry with molybdenum. That is also a very high, a very big, or let's say a high application for the wire combustion, wire spray technology. Peter, like this technology is over 100 years old, but as you told, it's still used on the market. What do you believe is the main reason why even 100 years later, this technology has a lot of application backgrounds and still very important? 
Yeah, because I told you uh, all these uh, processes increases or increase the lifetime of customer's component, the performance of customer's component. And uh, if a customer has an issue with wear or with corrosion or with a thermal issue, he can protect the part with a coating. Um, and that's a fantastic, that's fantastic technology and really, very still today, still valid. What about the economical side of this technology? The economical side, uh, a lot of people think this is uh, one of the, let's say, cheapest, uh, the, the, yeah, one of the cheapest process because you only need a rectifier, wires, and a gun. As soon as you start with combustion process, it gets a little bit more expensive because then you need a gas installation, acetylene, or you can also use hydrogen, oxygen. It's a little bit more expensive, but still a relatively cheap uh, investment to do or let's say to spray with these three technologies. Here we have to pay attention a little bit with the suction unit with the filter because here it's a really dusty process because we, I told you before, we melt a lot of material. We can have a very high feed rate. That means we also then, um, let's say, we generate dust and that we have to pay attention a bit with the filter system that uh, we are on the safe side concerning environment, environmental aspects. Cool. Peter? The technology, as we know, moved forward and I understand there are two more processes which are getting more and more attention and deliver better components to customers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you correct know, me. Yeah, I mean. yeah, that's right, absolutely right. You know, what we noted, or let's say, yeah, what the industry noted, that uh, we have here, you know, it, uh, the coating is formed, you said it before, when the particle melts and then will be accelerated and will be thrown on the surface. And then, as uh, as faster you can impact the particle can impact, as denser is the coating, and also as faster the process is faster, or let's say as more accelerated we we can propel the parts or the uh, the powders, as less time the powder has to oxidize from the environment. So they said, okay, we need an uh, an additional process where we are faster, and so then they developed the. HF process, high velocity oxyfuel process. Here we would like to finish our first part of the interview related to arc and flame processes used in thermal spray technologies and the next session will be related to HWF. Stay tuned and see you soon.